Hey, Sarah, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. I'm excited to chat with you today. Um, I thought for everyone we could start by maybe doing some short intros about ourselves and then see where that takes us. Yeah, for sure. Um, I can start. Hi, my name is Sarah. I'm in my one week term of CS at the University of Waterloo, and uh, I'm a part of 3Cycle as the VP Sales and Marketing. And I'm Jason. I'm a 2019 Schulich leader. I'm uh, somewhere between 4A and 4B, I think, um, in, uh, in CS and business at the University of Waterloo as well. Um, and I'm a co-founder of 3Cycle. Um, cool. So Sarah, Let's how is first year CS going? I would say my first term was pretty hard, kind of just transitioning into university. Um, my entire high school experience was online because I skipped uh, one year. So like literally all three years was during COVID. Um, so coming back in person, kind of making sure that I do well on exams, I know how to manage my time. That part was really hard in 1A, um, but it eventually got better. And I would say for 1B, like I chose courses that suit me better, electives that I like more. So I'm really excited for the future. That's awesome. I remember a lot of what it was like to be in first is in first year and first term, especially it can be a stressful time. It's a, definitely quite a learning experience and quite a transition. And I can't imagine how much more of a of a hard transition that becomes when you haven't done a lot of things in person uh, for the last few years. I got the chance to uh, TA a course at Laurier um, and a lot of the first year students had never written an exam before. So the midterm they wrote for that course was the first one they had written ever or for many of them in a couple of years. And um, it was definitely, definitely a surprise and definitely a challenge for many of them. Um, so I'm sure a lot of the folks in your cohort are seeing the same things as well. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully your midterms and exams went off a bit better than that course average was, um, but I'm I'm sure nonetheless, first year is always a bit of a challenge. Mm -hmm. And I know you're on uh, co-op in Dubai right now. How's that going? I am. I'm very lucky to be doing a co-op abroad this term. Um, that's that's sort of the where I am between 4A and 4B right now, somewhere on a co-op. Um, I'm doing management consulting at a firm in Dubai called Oliver Wyman. Um, management consulting for the folks that don't know, it's a bit out of STEM, so I'll, I'll give a bit of context for it. Um, some people will call us like business doctors. Um, I'm not a huge fan of that. I think it's a, a bit quirky of a definition, uh, but we do try to uh, find businesses and organizations um, and work with them to address the challenges they're facing. Um, so with previous projects, I've helped uh, previous co-ops in, in similar roles. I've helped companies with large digital transformations. I've helped them uh, build digital project products and projects, um, understand how their technology can go to market. Um, and then this term, I'm working with a Gulf Coast country um, on part of their uh, government strategy for a new thing they're launching soon. I can't say much about it, which is the annoying part about consulting, but it's a very cool project. And I get to work with uh, leaders of government, um, which is not a, a place most 21 year olds get to be. Um, I get to do a lot of fun stuff in the meantime as well. Uh, so, so far it's been a blast, but I'm just four days into it and we'll see where the term takes me. That's really cool. I honestly can't wait for co-op. Like I chose sequence four. So uh, my first co-op is actually next fall. So I have like three study terms back to back. Um, but I know a lot of my friends right now on sequence one and two are all applying. So I know it's really exciting. Yeah, um, the application period is definitely stressful, um, especially I know some of I know the job market's a bit tougher now, too. So it's been particularly stressful for folks. Um, three academic terms back to back can also be pretty tiring, <laughs> but um, hopefully when you when you get to your third and you start to get into applications, it's uh, not too hectic for you. I remember in first year I submitted like a hundred something applications um, all within like one evening while I was mentoring at Starter Hacks. Um, it was a mess. The Your first term going through the co-op process is usually pretty messy. Um, and usually because you're looking at quite a big scope of roles, you're not sure what you want to do. You're not sure what you could feasibly get because you haven't done one in the past. So most people try to cast a really wide net and that ends up taking a lot of time and effort. Um, but hopefully you have a, a relatively smooth experience with it when you do get into recruiting. Yeah. Um, I think we now transition into why we're here today. Um, yeah. So Jason and I are a part of a startup uh, called 3Cycle, which is a part of UW Velocity. Um, just for a little bit of context, UW Velocity um, is a social incubator. So they help a lot of startups with funding. They give us like a lab space, for example, and they're mostly just there for like mentorship and guidance. And uh, they have produced a lot of successful startups and we just started, but uh, we hope to be one of those one day. 
So yeah, yeah, I can start off with kind of explaining what uh, Three Cycle is in general. So we're a social enterprise working to address the 3D printed waste problem. And we do that by introducing localized circular supply chains for 3D printed waste. Um, in dummy language or in simpler terms, we just collect, recycle, and resell 3D printed waste at the city scale. So UW Velocity has been a big part. They fund us, um, and they also provided us a lab space in one of the uh, science buildings on campus at UW. Um, so that's where we're working right now. We're mostly just shredding up plastic, melting it, and remolding it into spools that we can sell back to the city so that they can use it again to 3D print. Um, we also have an engineering capstone team that works alongside us. So at UW in the engineering programs, uh, they have like a capstone project at the end, just kind of think of it as like a graduation project. Um, and there was a team that was like, hey, we were interested in 3D printing. And we were like, well, that's exactly what we're doing. Um, so yeah, they're helping us build a device. And um, that device, I'm not really sure on the like sciencey front, but it uses like crazy scientific principles that uh, sorts plastic by color, which is really interesting. Um, so yeah, we're gonna join forces and hopefully recycle lots of plastic. Yeah, um, I think the word they use is spectroscopy, something like that. They're yeah. shining light <laughs> off the material to try and identify what material it is, uh, which is one of the uh, interesting technical challenges that comes with trying to uh, manage plastic waste is just identifying what plastic you actually have in your hands. Um, so they're working hard on that at the moment. And uh, yeah, we're working on a lot of the um, like social and business sides of what it means to collect and manage waste, um, as well as the operational side of actually turning that waste back into something that's usable for the folks that make it. Um, it's really interesting to be building something circular like that because uh, you get to get very close to a lot of your both customers and contributors. So it's a, it's a fun model we have. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, why did you want to start 3Cycle in the first place? Yeah, um, that's actually a really good question. I've been 3D printing for, I did the math and it's uh, close to a decade now. Uh, in various forms, um, I started at a like small makerspace um, in my community. I eventually printed a lot through a uh, local library. I got to high school, my high school with a 3D printer. Um, and then just before the pandemic, I uh, purchased one for myself um, and built the printer from a kit, which was actually a lot of fun. Uh, through the pandemic, I tore it apart several times, rebuilt it back up several times, and got to learn a lot about 3D printing through the process. Um, I'm sure many of you know it's, it's a very interesting technology that gives you the opportunity to rapidly build your ideas into physical reality and sort of test prototypes, um, build some finished products, and quickly iterate with a relatively cheap manufacturing technology. Um, I thought that was super cool, and I still really love the technology and a lot of the potential it has. Um, but as I got more comfortable with it and started to use it more, um, I noticed it generates a good amount of plastic waste. Uh, for those that 3D print, a lot of, they'll know a lot of that comes from uh, things like your rafts, your support material, test prints, failed prints, um, benchmarking prints, things like that. Um, and for me, as I was you know 3D printing a lot myself, I noticed a lot of that plastic waste. Um, I think it was actually my mom who caught it first. She was like, well, are you just going to throw this all in the garbage? Um, and I'm like, well, I guess. I don't know. So I, I went, I Googled, I searched, um, looked around to see what exactly I can do with 3D printed waste. Um, and the reality is there's not really a good solution out there. Um, you know, I like to say when I'm going through this like problem statement, um, municipal recyclers don't accept it because they don't know what it is. They can't recycle it at a high enough volume. It's a thermoplastic that doesn't work with their existing recycling processes. Um, industrial recyclers, some will accept it, uh, but usually they need like a minimum quantity requirement or sometimes they charge a fee for collection, which means that for folks like myself, there's no way I'm going to be able to recycle my waste. Um, and the waste itself, PLA is, you know, technically made from corn, but it takes, I think it's supposed to be over 80 years in ideal lab conditions to biodegrade. So it's practically not biodegradable. Um, that means, unfortunately, this really cool technology also makes a good amount of plastic waste. Uh, the number we like to use is 7.1 million kilograms of waste annually that ends up in landfills in just the U.S. It's also rapidly growing technology. Um, I think over 20% annual growth expected for it, which means it's a problem that's also growing with that. Um, so I sort of sat on it for a while, to be honest. I was like, well, this sucks. There's nothing to do with this plastic waste. Um, I, like many others, started to sort of hoard some of it because it's um, it kind of sucks just having to throw it in the garbage, to be honest. It's not something you feel like you want to do. So I sat on it for a while, didn't really see a solution. And uh, one day it sort of just clicked for me that like maybe I can do something about this. Um, and for me, that was a, a big turning point for this. I just kind of decided that 
yeah, like I'll take a stab at it and see what happens, see what I can make um, and see if I can at least learn more about this if nothing else and maybe contribute towards a possible solution. Um, and I like to think that was the day three cycle was born. Um, from there, I did a lot of research, a lot more work. I went through a problem pitch competition and got to understand the problem space a lot better, learn about all the different stakeholders, did a ton of user interviews, which were super important to actually understanding the problem, building an idea that does work in reality. I like to talk about a lot how the first few iterations of what I had in my mind are practically infeasible and would have never worked, but I got to talk with so many interesting people um, who were doing work in the space and who were users and consumers of 3D printing and uh, downstream consumers of the waste to help get a perspective of what might actually work. Um, and that's what shaped the final idea of 3Cycle um, that I think you described so well. Um, we went through, I went through a social impact incubator over the summer through Greenhouse, and then this fall we launched our pilot. And uh, in short, that's kind of in our journey. Um, it's been really nice to be able to see this problem start to be solved. I think there's a lot more potential for it, and I, I'm sure we'll chat about that as well. Um, but it's been amazing to see something go from, you know, a problem I knew I had that was bugging me to something that I've seen so many other stakeholders have and be able to do something to actually address it. I think that's been really rewarding personally. Mm -hmm. That's super cool. And I guess from my end, um, I did an IT internship this past summer at the Waterloo Catholic District School Board. And it was a lot of like working with systems, but another part of it was they had a lot of 3D printers just sitting in the lab, not doing anything. Um, so they kind of put me to it just to play around with it, see if I could like print 3D name tags and things like that. Um, so I started playing around with it. And I also played around with 3D printers in elementary school. That was when I saw my first 3D printer actually. Uh, so when Jason reached out to me about like three cycle and his idea, I was like, that's super cool. And it's lines like perfectly with my interests. So um, that's when I joined the team. It was back in July when we first mentioned it, I think. Um, but we only started our pilot in September. So right now uh, we have a full team set up. Um, we're actually starting to do lots of work, which is really exciting. Um, yeah, and I guess if just... I'm not mistaken, I think uh, we first chatted about it at a Schulich social, didn't we? After, oh, yeah. um, was it not after like the SLX social? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, I think so. so. There you go. There's there's the Schulich Network making connections yeah. right there, um, and it was amazing to be able to bring you onto the team. Um, and yeah, we've been able to grow a lot since then as well, which has been really cool to see. Yeah. Um, so I guess overall, like we've both been on here for a little while, enough to accumulate a little bit of experience. Um, what do you think you've learned so far? I think I've learned a lot. Um, it's really interesting building something yourself that doesn't have a lot of precedent for it and getting to sort of make those decisions. Um, I think I'd done a lot of leadership roles in the past, like leading a club or, or another organization where sort of following someone's footsteps where the organization was already established, uh, where there was like clear pathways to do things or clear precedent or at least other comparisons we could look towards. Um, Whereas three cycles has been very net new. No one else is doing something like this. Um, there's a few other small startups that have tried to address the problem in very different ways and in very, with very different like processes and teams and um, trying to build something completely new um, has been a big learning experience. It's a good thing in a lot of ways because I, I have a lot of, I get a lot of like control. And I get to sort of make the decisions and inform something in the ways I would want to and, and in the ways I think is best. Um, but it also challenges what I think is best a lot. Um, and that's one of the, my favorite things about having a, a team around me now is that they do challenge my thinking a lot. And I think we get better ideas out of that all the time. Um, it also means there's times where I make mistakes um, where, you know, we we build and we grow and we make decisions that don't always work. And it's it's been a balance of like managing the, open field of everything we could possibly do and trying to chart a course down that that um, is actually practical for us and makes sense and uh, will bring us in the direction we want to go um, while like while taking reasonable risks along the way. Uh, so that all has been a really interesting learning experience for me. Um, how about you? You've been on the team for several months now. What have you found? Yeah, I think the like biggest thing that I was kind of surprised with is how much people are actually interested because like usually if you're starting some sort of you know nonprofit or even just a charity organization you don't expect everyone to be interested I mean you expect a very niche group of people um but my job as sales and marketing I kind of reach out to our external partners I keep in touch with them 
And a lot of that was uh, relying on my connections at the Waterloo Catholic District School Board because I grew up in that system. And like when I reached out to past teachers or past principals, a lot of them were just like, this is the coolest thing I've ever heard of. And they really want to get involved. And I expected a lot of no's like, you know, we're an education system. Why would we want to talk to you guys? But um, I think it's just like people are more understanding and like, I don't know, willing to help out than you might think. Um, I think a lot of people are just getting on this eco-friendly thing. Um, like when I reached out to my elementary school, they're like, oh, we have a new eco club, which wasn't there when I was um, in elementary school. And that eco club has been really interested in helping us collect waste as well. So I was just really surprised. I think um, the more we reach out to people, the more people we will find. It's not always going to be dead ends. And that's why I think like just making sure you talk to your network, making sure you rely on the people around you, whether it's just friends or business partners, um, is really important. And this is like how startups start. It's not about just like doing it yourself, but it's, you know, a team effort, not just your own internal team, but the community around you as well. I definitely agree. I think for me as well, that's been one of the things that's kept me motivated through this. Um, I guess another like learning is just I've learned a lot about how to manage my like life and everything else I do in balance with three cycle. Um, one of the reasons I maybe held off on the idea or one of the hesitations I had was because, you know, I'm a student full time or on co-op. I involved with other extracurriculars. Um, I like to have time for myself still. I like to, you know, take care of my life, laundry, cooking, cleaning, all those things. Not everyone loves to do, but you still have to dedicate time to. Um, and for me, I was sort of afraid that something else like this could come into my life and uh, take away from the opportunity to do the other things I enjoy. Uh, but for me, three cycles almost done the opposite. It's been really enjoyable and really rewarding. I think in big part for that reason you mentioned. Um, I have a distinct memory where I was like walking to one of my classes. I think it was, it was would have been a Friday morning because that was a Friday morning class. Um, and I have a little smartwatch. Um, it buzzed. I got a notification. I saw an email um, and it was related to three cycle. I had reached out to someone at the time uh, asking if they wanted to have one of our collection bins in their space. And the first line of the email was like, we love your idea. And that was a pretty tough week. That was like midterms. I got back a mark that I wasn't happy with. I was like stressed running late to a class. I had, you know, uh, in the thick of the semester, so a million assignments to think about other things breathing down my neck. And like, I saw that message and it was, it's it's such a, it's such a small sentence, but like, we love this idea to think that like something I created um, is actually appreciated by other people. And like, they're as they can be as excited about this as I am, um, was really cool. It put quite a smile on my face that day. Um, and I think I even teared up a little. I might have been might have been a bit sleep deprived that day, but it made a mark on me. I was like, people actually like recognize what we're doing here and and, and value it. Um, and we continue to see that. I, I did a pickup um, at a idea exchange, uh, Clemens Mill, uh, one of the libraries in uh, Cambridge. Um, and I remember coming in for that, and I like said hi to like the person at the front desk. They like brought me over to the librarian with this. Um, and like she was helping me, she was like showing me the bin they had collected all the material in. They actually gave us a second box of material, um, which goes to show how much of a problem this is and, and how excited people are to be able to solve it. But while I was doing that, someone else like saw that I was coming to collect the material, one of the other librarians working there. She's like, no, 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 wait, like I've got one more part for you. Um, and she was like so excited to do it. Uh, while she like ran to grab that part, I was chatting with the librarian. She's like, I think what you guys are doing is so cool. Um, and like, we're so excited about it here. Um, and that kind of blows my mind because at the end of the day, like they're basically just putting stuff they would have put in the garbage in like a cardboard box for us. Like they're not doing like anything crazy. Um, and frankly, on our team, we try to like approach problems incrementally. So we're not doing anything crazy either. Um, but they were so excited about it. They were so like interested to be a part of this initiative um, and found it like found it really exciting. Um, you mentioned as well that you got involved in 3D printing in elementary school. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things that also really excites me about what we're doing. Uh, we get to put our bins in elementary schools and high schools where students are not only interacting with really cool 3D printing technology, but also starting to look at it with a sustainability lens. Um, I've you know done collections from high schools where I've talked to teachers and they said like, yeah, like I draw attention to this in particular because um, it's important for our students to understand like what a circular supply chain looks like, what like sustainability initiatives can really mean in your local community and hear that you know other students are tackling these problems that they're seeing as well um, it becomes a talking point for people like that and i think about when i was first getting into 3d printing um, and how interesting it was for me at that time i think it's really cool to think that there's other students out there that are 
getting drawn in with the same interests and also sort of seeing a sustainability lens to things too. Um, that's maybe getting them thinking, getting them asking them, asking questions that they might not otherwise uh, would have. Um, so I don't know, I find it really motivating what we get to do. And I definitely relate to your point of, of seeing people being interested in this. Um, it's been it's been really cool to see what we've built be well received and well recognized. Yeah, I totally agree and understand. Like going back to your point on like time management, you know, as a full-time student and stuff, that was like one of my concerns in uh, 1A as well, because I was like, I'm a first year, I should focus on school, I need to pass my courses. Um, like, do I have time to take on an extracurricular. Um, but then, like you said, once we got involved, I was like, yeah, this deserves a lot of my time. And once I realized that I could manage it, I was like, I'm going to put my time into things that I enjoy doing because I realized like in terms of just work-life balance, I can't study well if I'm not, you know, doing things that kind of maintain my mental health. Um, and I think that was really hard for a lot of us just coming into university, making that transition. So I'm really glad I got involved. Um, and like, especially last term, I started off in all the advanced courses. So I was like struggling. I was trying to make deadlines and I was like, I don't know. Um, but I think I made the best decision to go down to the honors levels courses. I dropped all of them. Um, but yeah, I honestly was really glad I did that because I got to put more time into things that I genuinely enjoyed, like three cycle. Um, I ended up joining MathSoc as a first year rep. Um, I'm also on computer science club now. So I'm just really excited. I think like university is just an opportunity for people to get involved more. I think like in university, you have more of a chance of getting involved in the community as well. Um, so I like how this is kind of bridging like, oh, we're, you know, the UW like academic side, but also, you know, the broader KW community as well. So yeah, it's really exciting. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I think for me, it, it provides good balance. Um, and like you said, also provides a good opportunity to like learn a lot and, and see a lot about your community. Um, I wasn't, I know you were born or you were raised in uh, like Kitchener Waterloo area. Um, I wasn't. So for me, it's been really interesting just to get to like learn about the different organizations in our community. Um, both like off campus and on campus. Um, it's been interesting just getting to engage with like all the different folks nearby, getting to learn about like their systems and processes, getting to get them excited in our about our work. Um, it's been also really interesting to get the opportunity to engage with a lot of the different organizations on campus that do this. And I think that's another area where I've been surprised by like how supportive and receptive people are. Um, Early on, like I, I did a problem pitch competition, um, as I mentioned, uh, through what I think was then like the problem lab, which I think now has been pulled under velocity. Um, so that was really cool. It's good to sort of like take a first step into the innovation ecosystem. Um, but from that, I got connected with other folks. I think someone had seen our problem lab pitch. Uh, an old friend of mine sent me a message and said, hey, like, have you heard of Greenhouse? Uh, we did problem lab as well with our social venture. Um, and Greenhouse was suggested to us. It's like a social impact incubator. So I got involved with that, um, spent a few, uh, I think, spent basically a term a few months going through like their process, getting to build out the idea a lot and learn about what it looks like to pilot a, an idea like this and start to develop plans for the next term. Um, I also got connected with really cool folks. The folks at Greenhouse have been super supportive um, and they got me connected with others in areas like the Math Innovation Office, in Velocity and Velocity Science. Um, they've helped, up, helped set up connections with uh, other folks on campus. Uh, I think by quantity, uh, we have more bins placed on UW campus than like with any other type of stakeholder because um, there's so many different like groups on campus that 3D print and um, being able to step into the inno innovation ecosystem has opened up a lot of doors for us uh, in terms of not only getting connected with the people that need and need and use our service, uh, but also getting access to a ton of resources that have helped us grow and think about the future. Yeah, speaking of which, I actually have <laughs> the box right here. Oh, so, yeah, that's so I cool. I didn't know you brought a prop. <laughs> yeah, so I am um, picking up one of our boxes in D.C. this afternoon. So in order, I was just like, I might as well make the box. So I went last night and got the box um, and I'll be heading there after this podcast. Nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that's actually one of the folks we got connected with uh, through the Math Innovation Office, um, through Greenhouse. Um, Greenhouse got me connected with our math innovation lead. She got me connected with our facilities manager in uh, for like math uh, faculty, which got us our first office ever in DC uh, that helped us over the summer. Um, and I also talked to him about other folks he knew in the area that were 3D printing. Um, and this lab, the uh, human computer interaction lab in DC uh, was one of the folks we got. So to like chase that, trace that chain of connection back, like 
I did the Quantum Valley Investment Prom Pitch Competition. A friend referred me to Greenhouse. The folks from Greenhouse referred me to the Math Innovation Office, who referred me to a facilities manager, who referred me to the folks who uh, work in the HCI lab, to the prof there who actually referred me to the grad student who we work closely with, who I think you'll probably see later today. Mm -hmm. um, that's exactly what I mean when I say, like, once you sort of take a step into this, it's amazing to see where some of these, like, chains take you into discovering new folks and new opportunities for what you get to work on. Yeah. And I was just going to pull up one of our um, pictures. So this is our Instagram. I don't know if you can see that clearly, but um, this is what our lab looks like right now. We have lots of 3D printed waste. Um, and right now we like sort it by hand, just everything by color. Um, but that's what our engineering capstone team is working on. This is um, some plastic shredded with, <laughs> Jason did it with a coffee grinder. Um, and then we have like lots of videos and stuff on our Instagram. Um, so yeah, I really like the system. Like right now we do kind of feel small because like this box, we literally, you know, build it ourselves. We tape this QR code on, but in the future, like once we have um, kind of a more automated process, which is what we're working on right now, hopefully we'll be able to do things more efficiently. Um, and I guess I can like talk about kind of what we're hoping to do in the future. So yeah. we're hoping to expand obviously. And I think, um, like a good place to do that is just through other schools, like whether we rely on the Shulik network or just our own connections. I think as university students, we should like connect with our friends, whether that be at like Western or U of T or even just UBC, like places all over Canada. And we were thinking like schools are a good place to start that because schools also have a lot of funding. Uh, we have more clubs that you can apply for funding for. Um, and yeah, we do have to get over some technical challenges. Like, for example, the grinder wasn't really working or the shredder wasn't working that well. So we ended up with the coffee grinder. Um, but yeah, that's why we're kind of experienced kind of in the KW region for now. And then once we got the KW region set in stone, uh, we will expand to other cities. Um, right now, to date, we have 32 kilograms of plastic waste collected sitting in our lab in that picture. And our goal is 250 kilograms by August 2023. So just in a mere few months. But um, we do have faith in that because we started off kind of slow, but now we're like picking up the pace really quickly. So even though 32 to 250 might seem like a pretty big jump, uh, we do have confidence in that. Um, yeah, and then zero to 32 <laughs> also seems like a big jump, but we made yeah. that happen. Um, so who knows where things go next? Yeah. And I would say like um, also one of our future goals is we want to get the community more involved, not just like in you know providing this waste, but literally on our team as well. So we were thinking possible like volunteer opportunities for high schoolers and university students. Uh, we were thinking of expanding our team even more because right now we're a team of five, but because of Waterloo system with co-op, there's always like two members who are on co-op in a different city. So technically like we only have three on campus. And even then it's like, for example, right now um, we have two members at Laurier and me at like Waterloo. So it's also a bit difficult because our lab space is in Waterloo and lawyer students can't get in. So it's a lot of logistical stuff that um, is kind of complicated. So that's why we're hoping to maybe expand our team as well. Um, but yeah, mostly just expanding, making sure we get Waterloo, you know, perfectly set up. Um, and we're really interested in also like possibly getting involved in hackathons or building an app. Uh, making sure from that technology front, we're connecting with our users more because right now our only form of social media is Instagram. Um, we thought that would be the best choice right now because it's kind of where most startups like start marketing themselves. Um, yeah, we did consider TikTok for a while. But, um, I don't think a lot of like people who are interested in startups are on that yet. It's mostly just a bunch of teenagers, but um, we will see in the future. We do hope to just expand and make sure our name gets out there more. Yeah, I think one day you're going to have to teach me some TikTok dances. I don't know how well that'll go. Um, I'm not the best at that sort of thing, but hey, maybe I can give it a shot uh, when we get there. Um, but yeah, Sarah made a couple of call outs. I'll do my job as like a co-founder and make clear shameless plugs for them. Uh, one, follow us on Instagram. If you made it this far into the podcast, clearly you're interested in what we're doing. Uh, so follow us on Instagram. Three cycle. Yeah, there three. you go. Three cycle 3D. Um, if you're at another university and interested in 3D printing, um, interested in sustainability, or just like the work we're doing, uh, let us know because we're looking at bringing our model into other cities as well. And like you mentioned, starting that uh, through universities. Um, and if you're at, if you're another Shulik Leader at University of Waterloo, you probably already know us, so it's probably easy to come <laughs> say hi. But uh, if you're interested in joining the team or getting involved, uh, definitely let us know. Uh, we're in particular looking for a VP of Operations um, to join the team quite soon, uh, but also just looking at growing in general. Um, so do let us know if you're interested. 
Um, yeah. But yeah, I think you gave a good overview of everything that's next. We're hoping to sort of settle into KW and uh, get a good grasp of our technical process and our operations. And then uh, once we start to feel comfortable with that over the next few months, bring that into new cities and continue to grow by just re replicating this model uh, city by city and campus by campus, um, hopefully taking over the world and or eliminating 3D printed waste. Yeah. And I guess my final question for you is, um, like, obviously, as a startup, we need lots of funding. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to do this. Just kind of for like other people, you know, where do we get our funding from? And what are some opportunities or pathways to go down to get funding? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and I guess another thing I was surprised by as well, um, it'll depend a lot on what your venture is and what you're working on. Uh, for us, we are, um, you know, sustainability focused. Uh, we're not yet registered as a not-for-profit. Uh, we like to pos position ourselves as a social venture. Um, any profits we make, any funding we get goes right back into the business and into helping us grow and scale towards our social mission, um, our mission of eliminating 3D printed waste. Uh, so for us, we look to a lot of like social incubators. Uh, both universities have been supportive uh, through their like sustainability offices um, and their sustainability grants. Um, most notably and most recently, uh, we secured uh, 9,200 in funding from uh, the Sustainable Sustainable or Sustainability Action Fund at the University of Waterloo. Um, that was amazing news to get and not something I was expecting. So I was very happy when I saw that. Um, but we've leveraged a lot of those opportunities on campus through the innovation ecosystem, uh, through both campuses, uh, uh, both Laurier and Waterloo, uh, to identify different groups that focus on initiatives like ours and are able to support it. Um, so the three main sources of funding we got, one was from the original problem pitch competition I did. Um, we got 2K from that. Um, we got five and a half K, our uh, full funding ask granted um, at the end of the uh, social incubator through Greenhouse. And then most recently that funding through SAF. Uh, we're also putting through applications for other stuff at the moment. So we'll see when those come back, um, including some uh, competitions to like recognize students who do work like what we do, um, as well as similar funds and opportunities at Laurier. Mm -hmm. And I guess, like, where is our funding going to? Like, how do yeah. startups use their money? I promise I'm not embezzling this all off to the Cavens. Um, <laughs> this goes back to our equipment for the most part um, and our resources. Um, basically, a lot of the physical things in our lab. Um, for the most part, so far, that's been equipment, which has been our big expense. Um, it's this is maybe a bit of a tangent, but it's actually pretty interesting because the equipment we purchase is relatively specialized. There's few folks that make something like this. Um, and the ones that do are kind of close to us. One of the early connections I got uh, was to a company called Reditech. It's actually Toronto based. I got to like get on a call with their founder and chat about their like protocycler system, uh, which was one of the options we were considering. And it's crazy to think like I was two degrees of connection away from the person who runs the company that makes the equipment that we need to purchase. Um, but for the most part, that's been our largest expense since it's usually uh, other small startups building these these equipment for a relatively niche purpose. Um, so they they can't sort of distribute their fixed costs as much. So the equipment is usually a bit more expensive um, than like than just raw materials, and then uh, or than you just expect for equipment like that. Um, we also, uh, for the most part, have um, a lot of miscellaneous things in our lab. Uh, Sarah mentioned the grinder. Um, I wonder if that's arrived. I don't know if you were in that lab space today. I was um, there yesterday, but I did not look carefully. Okay, we'll have to take a look. Amazon says it's arrived. Um, so things like that, um, those are usually a bit more affordable because they're just, you know, typical equipment or like typical appliances we purchase. Um, and then even just small stuff like the cardboard boxes and the label, uh, Sarah showed it's crazy once you start to place a lot of those bins that like a 90 cent cardboard box actually starts to add up and you start to, it's good to make sure you have funding there and you can keep track of those to to get them covered as as those as those tiny miscellaneous costs uh, do appear for an organization like ours. Yeah, and we actually just hit a milestone. Um, this box right here that will be our thirtieth box out in the city. Oh, uh, yay! Yeah, that's very cool. Like we could end it off with maybe just giving some tips to other people who are interested in startups. Yeah. Um. Sorry, I'm getting a phone call. Let me hang that up. <laughs> Well, I guess I can talk about tips in general. I mean, I'm still pretty inexperienced as a first year and as a new member to this team, but um, I think overall, it's just like, you got to take that first leap of faith because once you get like a little bit of traction going, you will be surprised into like how much impact you can make, not only in your own lives, but on the community or in the community um, as well. So yeah, mostly just taking that first leap of faith, knowing that like you will have to put time into this. You will have to you know, sacrifice your spare time and things like that. But um, 
in the end, I do think it'll be worth it. And even if we don't go anywhere, like we still took a lot from this experience as people, we learned a lot. It was a fun experience. Um, so it's just something like a lifelong memory, I guess. Yeah, definitely taking that leap of faith. I totally agree with that. Um, the other thing I would say as well um, is talk a lot with your with your users, whoever that is, with all the different stakeholders that might interact with whatever service or product you're making or offering um, and really try to understand them and um, get their ideas and get their input, um, particularly if you're talking to folks who've noticed this problem as well. We were lucky to step into a space where, believe it or not, I wasn't the only one that had noticed this. Um, so it was... It was interesting to get to chat with a lot of the other folks that had thought about this in the past, but never done anything and get a lot of their ideas and their input. Um, I like to think I like to say three cycle is definitely not my idea, but the collective idea of uh, all of the folks that have given um, even like 15 minute early in user interviews to us to give some perspective on this um, have gone a long way to shaping what we've done so you know, talking to people and talking to people before you start to build something and start to invest too much time and energy to make sure that what you're building really does serve the needs of the users you're looking to serve and um, meets meets a real need out there. Um, a lot of people talk about like product market fit. Um, I think that's something you have to not only build the product for, but talk a lot to your market and really understand. Yeah, and we were talking about in the future, like setting up a pricing model, because once we do, you know, create these schools, like to sell them back to the people that donated to us in the first place, um, just making sure we like get that circular, you know, chain going, because right now it's kind of just going to our lab and sitting there as we experiment. Um, but in the future, yeah, we do hope to get like more of a circular motion going up. So yeah, I think that's it from my side, if you have anything to add. No, I think this has been a fun conversation. Yeah. Well, thanks for having us, the Sheila Network and the Sheila Podcast. Um, and we hope you guys like our idea. And, you know, if you're interested in something like that, reach out to us. Um, we give you our Instagram. You also know our names. So, like, we would just like to talk about this more um, to people who are interested in 3D printing. Yeah, if you guys haven't noticed, I can go on forever about this. So if you do ever want to talk about this or hear more about what we're doing, definitely feel free to reach out. Um, and yeah, a big thank you to uh, David and Danny who helped us put this together and uh, make this possible and who continue to do a lot for the Shulik Network. Uh, so very appreciative of all of their efforts. And uh, thanks, Sarah, for taking some time to chat today. Yeah, thank you, Jason, as well. See ya. Awesome.